Welcome back. Um, this video focuses on DC sweep simulation. Uh, if you've been following these videos uh, from the beginning, you remember that we have uh, looked at a number of different simulations so far, but mainly focused on the um, DC bias point simulation, which means nothing is changing. All the values are as it's been spe specified, and then you do the simulation. In this case, uh, what we want to do, we want to introduce the DC sweep. It's, it's, a, it's a useful uh, simulation process where you have one, two, or three sources, but then up to three sources where you want to vary them. Either you want to vary them linearly, meaning from one value to the other, and you want to know how your circuit behaves at every point on those, so you can plot a graph where, where the horizontal axis is the particular source you're changing, your first source and then you watch what the circuit behaves as the value of that source changes. So I have a very uh, simple um, circuit here uh, with a couple of sources and a bunch of resistors. And let's say we want to find out how the current in R3, how the current in R3 changes as, uh, as, we, as we change the value of V1, for example. As the value of V1 changes, how does R3 changes? When you're doing DC sweep, it really doesn't matter what value you put in for the particular part you are, uh, particular source you are trying to do DC sweep on. Uh, so you can put any number you want. I put in a four in here, but that's not what's going to be used. So when I click, just so the circuit is drawn like normally do, then you go to the running the simulation either from the menu item or from the icon. So you click on this, it comes up and usually goes to the transient. We, we haven't gone there. We've only so far talked about DC operating point, which is a single point, single value for every component runs through and checks it. And then now we are talking about DC sweep, which means take, a, take one of the sources and sweep it under over a range. So you can have up to three. Most of the time I use the first one to, because in the second and third one generate multiple graphs. Um, but let, let's do the first one. And then if you're interested, you can explore second and third source, adding second and third sources that are exactly like you had the first source. So let's go ahead and start the first source. First thing you want to know what name we want to, we want to sweep V1, we want to change the value of V1. Then it gives you some 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 option. You can you can put a list of numbers you want it to go through. Uh, you want some decade and octave using logarithmic, logarithmic, logarithmic scales. I usually use linear unless there is a good reason if I'm going over a very, very large range and I want to have it broken down so I can see all the ranges, uh, then I'll use uh, logarithmic. But most of the time for what I'm doing, what we need to be doing here, linear should be good enough. So I'll give a starting value. Let's say I want to start at a value of one volt. And I, want, and, and I want to finish the value of 20 volts. And I want to be able to plot this every, let's say, 10th of a volt so I get a nice smooth curve coming to me so I can kind of see what happened. Depends on, once again, the starting and the ending. It depends on what you're looking at. And the increments is just depends on how precise you want your graph to be. The only drawback of making the increments really small is sometimes if the range is very large and you have very, very small increment and you need to calculate a lot of points, it might take a while depending on the speed of your computer and a few other variables, you might have to wait for it. But uh, for this, we shouldn't have to wait much at all. Uh, it should be almost instantaneous. And, and once again, you can also write this uh, uh, P spice up or up code if you want to by just simply putting dot DC saying DC sweep and then putting uh, which which kind you want if you leave it blank it's going to be linear then what's the source you've selected where are you starting where are you ending and what step or you can use the graphic as soon as first do uh, doing if you have a second and third source you want to sweep along with the first source you're more than welcome to add those in here as well but let's leave it at first one and just so we see what happens so what we're basically telling them to do is to take the value of V1 from one volt to 20 volts in steps of 0.1 and, and then we can chart whatever we want to chart, okay? So it's done the DC sweep for us. And by the way, this DC sweep simulation, I just put it out there as a label. It's just, it's just a text label. It's not really doing anything. 
So um, I look at this thing and I say, okay, that's great. So I'm going to go up here and right click and add a trace. And what do I want to let's say, let's say we want to find out the current through R2, how the current through R2 changes as this voltage changes. So I'll just go find it R2 and say, okay, I of R2, tell me what's going on. And it should, oh, okay, it's linear. It's literally linear as the voltage in this thing goes up um, that, um, that uh, the current through R2 goes, and I kind of, you know, you can kind of look at your circuit and kind of think about it from an analytical point of view and then tools you have in your head as far as the, how the circuit is supposed to behave. And it sounds generally reasonable, if you will. And of course, you can add other, you know, if you later on you decide, I'm really, really interested in voltage at some point. And uh, by the way, the voltage is usually I like to put a label on it because I can never quite figure out of the naming scheme, which one is pin one, which one is pin two, which one is pin three, uh, because those are the nodes and God knows how they decided what the nodes are. And let's say, let's say, um, um, and of course, uh, V1 is this one. So um, that's not very interesting. So let's say, let's say, let's see what else is interesting. Let's say R5. I'm just guessing what R5 looks like. So we're going to do a both there. Yeah, okay, good. Oh, by the way, so if, I, if you haven't done this before, if you've never done it, this is pretty cool. If you want to put a graph in here, I could also add a trace where I'm going to basically say, okay, I actually want some combination of these things to not just I or V, but I, maybe I want power. If I want the power from uh, V1, I'll just take, I say, okay, take the voltage of V1 and multiply that by current that goes through V1. And that basically shows me, okay, as the voltage changes, how does the power changes? So, so again, what I wanted to show you here, you can actually add expression and plot expressions here. Oh, interesting. As the voltage increases, you see, you see what's happening. That's kind of interesting. I, you know, uh, the power is actually seeing, oh, did I do that? Yeah, the power seems to be going down. Well, that's an interesting concept. I wonder why. It's probably because when the current gets, to, as the current goes up, this current source starts to feed into it. So then maybe the next analysis would be to go back and see if I change, if I, you know, if I vary I1, what happens to that? Anyway, so this is another tool in your tool bag. It's called the DC sweep simulation, allows you to vary one source and watch what your, how your circuit, voltage, current, power, whatever, whatever you're interested in behaves. That brings us to the end of DC sweep simulation introduction. See you next time.